we're going to start tonight with learning about EV charging for our town. Uh, how do we bring it in? How do we get a hold of it? How do we handle grants and that kind of thing? And uh, Chris and Nathan and Nathaniel are going to help us out from Green Peak Solar on what they've learned because they're looking for the same thing in their own towns. So they've done some research. Thank you, Sally. Sure. Um, so, and, and I do want to acknowledge, Sally, that, that there are people within Bristol who have been thinking about this for some time and that applications for grants have gone in already. Um, and I also want to be upfront um, with the fact that Nathaniel and I haven't done this before and we are are learning as we're going, but there are a number of things that um, we have uh, skills in, like siting projects, overlaying electrical infrastructure, land rights, meters, et cetera. Um, so I, I think we, we do just have skills and willingness to, to contribute that effort. Um, and also these grants and, and sometimes Green Mountain Power, um, grants from the state, grants from Green Mountain Power aren't, aren't necessarily written in plain English. And there, there's not um, a, a lot of information about how to kind of read the tea leaves. So our, our hope here is to lay out um, kind of the, the, playing field as we see it and make make recommendations and offer our support. Um, so with, with that, I, I did prepare just a few slides that I'll go through pretty quickly and then um, would, would just open it up to, to questions and um, see where it goes from there. Any Any Great. thoughts or questions so far? or should I just go through it? Anyone here, go ahead and pipe up if you have a question. Um, can, you, you know, feel can you explain the, uh, or refresh my memory on the, uh, the charger levels? Yes, yep. So um, I've done my best to really simplify the charger levels um, as much as I could. Um, they're really level one, level two, and fast charging. So level one, if you buy an EV in Vermont, Green Mountain Power will pay for and install, I think, a level one charger in your garage. And that's going to be a slower um, charge, low voltage, slow charge. Then a level two, which a lot of commercial spaces um, uh, employers will will put in their parking lots um, and you'll see them around uh, uh, qu quite a quite a bit if you if you see a charger out in the public generally it's going to be a level two charger um, now there's there's the advent of these direct current fast charging stations that are starting to really become more prevalent um, and it, it is a real piece of infrastructure. This is something that needs to connect to um, uh, three phase power and it, it pulls a lot of energy. Uh, and the benefit of that is you can charge your car 80% of, the, of, of a full charge in 15 minutes. So it's kind of as close as you can get to a um, gas station. So you want to have those in um, high volume trafficked areas. Um, whether or not Bristol falls in that category, um, we'll, we'll get to, but I, I think there it's a, it's a really interesting option. Um, did, I, did I do a good job simplifying that? That's great. That? That's yes. great. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, 
I want to just say that uh, there are people who are asking for a fast charge here. And like one of our representatives is saying, get a fast charger. That's what you need to do. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there, even though other people say, oh, it's slow and be fine because then people stick around and shop for a while. Yeah. So it, it, it is also worth mentioning the, the last line here. Green Mountain Power is willing to fund a, a portion of these. And for a level two charger, it's $750. And maybe Nathaniel remembers, I think that's per charger. So if you were to do a double charger, I think you actually get 1,500. But then for the, the fast chargers, because it really is a, a much larger piece of infrastructure, they're, they're funding $40,000 um, mm -hmm. of, of, of those towards, installations. Towards, I think, just like the interconnection related costs. So right. You still have to, the difference in level two is a seven fifty. Seven hundred dollars and fifty cents is a like a, a rebate, I think, for the charger or for the plug on each charger. Whereas the forty thousand dollar grant has to go towards like I believe it would end up being like GMP type work. Yeah. So, but that's still a significant portion of the cost to install a level three or fast charger. So the. A project, a successful project will have a number of elements uh, that were not necessarily um, obvious to me before I started poking around and asking questions. But uh, probably the most obvious is a parking space. Um, but uh, I didn't really think about cord safety as being a real <coughs> primary um, uh, input to that parking space. So meaning you, you want to figure out a way to not have a cord cross the sidewalk, for instance. Um, but you also want it to be in a pretty high traffic area. Then for a fast charger being really like adjacent to three phase power is pretty important because uh, moving three phase power, even a small distance um, is quite expensive. Uh, if you move it too far, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna, the project is gonna be a multiple of cost, I would say. Um, and then also not obvious to me was uh, there like an actual GMP customer needs to sponsor the, the project. So somebody with a meter or an account at least is going to need to um, stand between payments from the charging network and paying Green Mountain Power. And um, it doesn't seem to be a highly profitable position to be in, <laughs> to be that project sponsor. Um, it seems mostly admi an administrative burden uh, would be my characterization of it, but it can't happen without it. Um, then a charge network and equipment. So there's, there are choices to be made about what equipment to choose, both in terms of the like what is the most popular network in Vermont? Like what, what are people most likely to be a member of? And then balancing that with the actual cost of the equipment. Um, so, and, and that's something that should really kind of be investigated early to, to price out a few different options as well as figure out what, what charge network Vermonters prefer because I, I really don't know the answer to that. And then of course, um, there, <clears throat> there's likely to be a gap between grant funding and actual cost. So um, that's, that is definitely something to be addressed. Um, so, and, and these are all things that that Nathaniel and I would be happy to, to participate in um, thinking through. So quest, questions about 
project needs. Hearing none. So this is a map of existing charging stations in Vermont. Steven, you're shaking your head. I can't believe we don't have one in Bristol. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it, this is public charging, so it's it's such a hole in the in the map. Yeah. So fast, and but one thing to notice is fast chargers are really sparse, and they are, but for Waitsfield, um, pretty. They're on the highways, you know, um, Middlebury Route Seven Highway. Um, but you you've got a lot of traffic and um, then the level one and two chargers are are definitely more accessible and on the lower trafficked areas and i i only bring this up to say whoever is providing a grant for a fast charger is going to be looking at the same map and thinking about if there's an application for instance in for virgins or bristol um they might choose for Jens over Bristol. And I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't apply for it, but I just, I, I'm, um, I'm more optimistic about getting funding for the level one and two because it's more of an administrative application. And if you build it, they'll, they'll pay you the fixed amount. Yeah, uh, I wonder how much opportunity to, in this case, obviously we don't know, we've never responded to these, but Seems like an interesting opportunity for, to be, um, I don't know, express yourself the right way when you're writing the grant. Yeah. Uh, anecdotes about um, Senator Bray wanting to see one. <laughs> I don't know if that can hurt in these kinds of processes. Yeah, you know? yeah I mean, if he'll sign the application, it would help. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so charging networks, um, I don't really know much about these, but I know that they would all offer pretty much the same thing um, in that they would sell the equipment and provide the accounting um, behind the scenes to charge the customer and reimburse the, the project sponsor. Um, I do think there are variations of quality between them, but I haven't developed an opinion. Um, I think probably the best way to do this might be to interview them, pick three and get three to, to price a specific thing, or maybe, or maybe figure out which ones have, have sort of the jump in Vermont because um, you, you want people to belong to the community so that they'll they'll use the station. People can obviously, and I think do, belong to multiple networks. Um, not driving an electric car myself, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, so getting into funding opportunities, Sally, I didn't see this Green Mountain Power opportunity in your email. I don't know if anybody in Bristol has applied for this specific opportunity but um, it's a very simple application. Uh, and Nathaniel and I have a, have a direct line to um, the person kind of in charge. So I think we could get feedback really quickly um, without too much effort to see how, if there would be interest in um, and providing funding to a fast charging station in, in Bristol. Um, the other piece funding source EVSE grant program seems like it is, it's being set up for one developer to install a few, several highway stop fast chargers. Yeah. Um, so, and I think this was feedback that you've, you've received already, but I, I would just highlight that there is this fast charging funding available, but I, I really don't think Bristol would be a great 
applicant for it. I agree. But, but you, we may be able to help you guys find out who is likely to win that RFP. And if there's a site and all the other pieces of the puzzle, yep. that person may be willing to take on Bristol as one of the locations mm. to spend a portion of the 750K on. That's a good and that's, point. I, you know, right. not, we just, not, not ever doing this, like numbers are with a huge grain of salt, but um, sounds like the fast charger is on the order of $50,000 for the equipment. So if you could stack this with the grant for the GMP interconnection, then you're, the monetary needs probably about $50,000 if you can get GMP to pay for a portion. Obviously, that's you'd have to add on another, whatever it ends up being, yeah. five to probably $15,000 for the GMP portion. Yeah. Um, but so the 750,000 is, I don't know what's the math there, but it's 15 stations in theory. Yeah would go for whoever wins the grant. So maybe there's a chance of Bristol being one of those 15. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. I had a question on the slide before it. Yep. If you, uh, this one or this one? Um, the station, this one is true, right? Oh no. I see, I have my little pointer on it, but um, that's not working. You can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, doom, huh? Gosh. It was, it was too beyond that. Yeah, this one. Okay. Um, so number six. Yep. Um, so so uh, number yeah. six. Um, I, I think I know what they mean. They mean to... The whoever is the sponsor needs to mm. agree to manage it in a way that we're going to reduce demand during peak. And I don't get the other part though. Yeah, I, I think I think okay. what it really means is um, they're they're going to allow people to put this in pretty much wherever they want, and it could be a really large load. So during peak hours they're going to, they're going to probably govern it a little bit. So, um, and this is a statement that the project sponsor won't complain if the cars are not charging really quickly during peak hours. Right. Um, Nathaniel, do you read that the same way? I think that's true. I do. Yeah. I also don't know how much of that is like actually done in practice or, um, like I'm on a member of another thing that the um, it's called the system Vermont system planning committee. And we talk about the state energy load forecast. And it's my, I don't believe that any of the utilities have a really extensive um, like car to grid or grid, like grid curtailment pr program. Um, so I think some of this is potentially just like aspirational or forward looking um, as they develop, you know, the relationships and there's, I think there are probably that that could be rate design where it gets more expensive or it could be yeah. ratcheting down or it could even be just needing to call that resource, turn it off completely to make sure that the peak load, if it gets so high, it doesn't cause an outage. Yeah. So there's lots of levels of control. Oh, I think okay. a lot of them are theoretical at this point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, which so Nathaniel and I were were brainstorming about where we thought a really good spot might be um, for really any type of charger, whether it be fast charger or level two. And we came up with this yep. spot on the green. Yep. Um, and you can kind of see like there may be able to be some sort of pull mount. That, so um, now let me go back up to here. I mean, clear, clearly there's parking spaces there um, and any anything would need to be right up against the parking space. It wouldn't be able to be on the other side of the sidewalk for the, the cord reasons. Yeah. So I think town participation would be needed for that portion. It is adjacent we, to, yep. 
It sounds like the same it, place that was proposed before. Yeah, it is. It is. is. It yeah, that's the place that we were planning to put it. Amazing. <laughs> That'll make it really easy to use your application materials. <laughs> um. So. Wow. So it. Um. Who was the project sponsor? Because that's the part I couldn't figure out. Maybe it would probably need to be the town. Yeah. Um. It was Ian. Ian uh, filled it out, and he's he submitted. He tried submitting it twice, and the second time it went through, but we didn't get it because they were doing highways and bigger or, or more volume. But um, he's got all the information, and he said he would hand it off to me. Um, I just saw him today, okay. and he did, did he said he'll get it to me. Did he? Does he have an opinion about um, which network? to use and has he gotten pricing for the the equipment i think he did and this was a couple of years ago cool and i think charge point sounds familiar but i'm not positive because i've been hearing other people talk about chargers so i can't remember who's talking about what i think charge point is is perhaps the largest network and probably oldest network yeah. um but i don't i'm not really sure so, so interesting. And then so with the town, because I think that the there are some meters in the park there. It looks, I'm guessing those are town. Like you see in the back, right oh, yeah. the bar, there's a little meter pedestal. Lots so of meters. Sounds meters for the lighting in the park. Yeah, there are a number of meters in the park. Gotcha. Cool. Um, so, the, so the town was basically going to be willing to be the meter owner, if you will. Yeah. You know what? I'm wondering if this is the same. Is this right across from the post office? I think that there's another pole that looks right. just like this about 50 yards away to the left. Yes. Yeah, so okay. The, it's the one to the left that we were looking at. Yeah. Actually. Which I don't know. I, it I might have been same, this one. Same, same difference. Yeah. Um, have all, all of the same attributes. I would, I would kind of, one of them may be less expensive to install um just electrically for for whatever reason um but i i think at a minimum a level two charger um would do great really anywhere along the the green there yeah um but if if lightning strikes and funding is available for a fast charger i think i think that would also be pretty pretty fantastic yeah um, or two what uh maybe two level twos yeah yeah or i forget what um gmp was saying the like typical cost of the level two was chris yeah i i i think that the 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 way to do it is and i and i think as sally's mentioned that the costs are changing so um prop probably just get two or three beds and see see what what comes in so yeah. is, is the three power across the street by the bank is that the closest or is i think that... so i was looking at that on street view and yes i think so uh -huh. sally can i interrupt a minute sure hi uh has the select board approved this whole thing yeah they did that um I recall the meeting, the meeting I saw where they discussed it, that there was no decision made on it until all the information was in. Yeah. So, oh, they haven't they haven't agreed to anything we're talking okay. about right now. That's, that's what I'm they concerned. they agreed to the application that happened two years ago. Right. Okay. Yeah. They, this yeah, is and, yes. and the, the picture you are looking at which shows those cars, that's opposite the, the Sunoco station. Correct. The, okay. the other one is down further. Okay, great. And, and I think the one that we were talking about previously was down towards the Catholic Church on that corner. Yes, right. it is. Yeah. So, so, and we, um, there are probably numerous really great spots to put one. Um, this, this was just an example that, that we pulled out of the sky um, well, for, for a number of reasons, but it seems like there's... General. Believe me, we, we have scoured the town for spots and it's hard to find a place where you can't, when you're not crossing a sidewalk. Yes. And so this is, this is, it took us, 
you know, a lot of looking and this is the best place we could find. Um, so, it, you know, we can't use the back side of the green because of businesses and this and that. And it's just like, there's not, there's not much. So this is the place. Yeah, we do have limited parking spaces in town. Exactly. So, uh, well, I have my own opinion on it, but you guys go ahead. I'm, I'm going to mute. Okay. <laughs> that's well, all right. And um, so that's kind of the summary of the information that I'm bringing tonight. Uh, and I think what, what Nathaniel and I can provide in terms of assistance is is kind of whatever you need, Sally, whatever is helpful um, in terms of coordination, in terms of uh, preparing documents, um, getting equipment pricing, um, coordination of the meter sponsor GMPN network, if someone, if it's helpful to have someone stand in between that, and then um, assist in funding applications. Um, I, I think those are all things that that we could do pretty easily if if helpful. That is a dream come true. Thank you so much. Great, <laughs> so well, helpful. Um, well, what what do you? Um, I wonder if. I mean, are are there other interested parties? in Bristol that it would make sense to have like a subcommittee. Yeah. Um, I think that, we should have Ian who, who worked on it before and he's on the select board. He should probably be involved just because he's learned some things and he, he knows he can think about what the select board's up to. And, you know, I was talking to him about money today about it. And he said, anything that the town would be able to kick into, they'd have to know so far ahead because they plan, you know. But I also felt like if something needed to happen faster, maybe some community members could come together and come up with the money and then get paid back once the town could find find it or something like that, you know. Um, yeah, I, and I, I mean, my hope, yeah, I, I understand that constraint. And I would I would hope to I would hope to get all of the funding through grant applications. But if that were not the case, um, we could assist oh, in finding it elsewhere. Um, this is great. Porter just put in the um, chat. What about the town's revolving loan fund? I think that's a, another great idea. This is a, a perfect use for that. Don't most of the departments too like have I guess what they call them sinking funds? It's funds that they're stowing away for future expenses um, that you that's not going to be used immediately but could be maybe tapped into whether it's you know the town highway department or you know some other entity I mean that's yeah a potential maybe. source of income yeah I mean, uh, um, yeah Ian would be able to help us with that and besides I like what um, Chris is saying is that hopefully we're finding it all in grants. And so yeah. we don't have to even go there. That's great. So you're saying we should just think of the people who should be in a, a small group to work on this. I, I think so. And unless, um, unless you want to do it at this level, um, we, we could do it with this group, but I know that you have a lot of other things that you're working on. So it might be more efficient if we um, had a subcommittee that was really focused on this and came back yeah. and reported um, results. That sounds good. And, and by subcommittee, almost probably an email list. Maybe yeah. A dollar or two, but hopefully pretty working. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean, uh, an email list? Well, just like if there's an email with the people that are interested, you know, and yeah. want to contribute, then I think a, a lot of the offline communication can be through an email list that okay. folks can participate in if they want to, or, but I don't know how, whatever, yeah. I don't know how that works with, um, you know, 
committees and stuff like that? Well, yeah, with the committee, we would probably only have one or two of us on it because we can't really be working outside of the committee. But mm -hmm. if we're if we're a subgroup that is, you know, less than a quorum, then we can, um, you know, work on things and then bring it back to the committee to talk about it. Um, well, I'd certainly like to be on it. <laughs> oh. Me too. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, maybe we we can just uh, connect outside of this if unless there's anyone on the meeting right now that wants to be a part of it and speaks up. I'm more than willing to participate. You're the one who's going to be away for a month. Is that what you said? <laughs> I am, and that's that's kind of the downside. I hesitate to raise my hand a lot of the time because. I like to run away a lot. Um, well, we'd love to have you if you want to, if you're able, but if you're not able. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to be here until the end of April. Okay. You know, I wouldn't well, be able to, I'm usually here through the summer. I go away for a while in the fall. I'm usually here in the winter. Okay. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can see what happens in this first month and then have you jump on when you come back? Sure, I'll check in. Okay. Great. Um, all right. Well, that's that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh. Um, I'll be in touch, and then we can um, figure out what how to go from there. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll. I'll stick around and see what else I can learn. Last last time, yeah. it was pretty good. It yeah. was such a, it was such a great meeting. I loved it. I list, I watched it yesterday just to remember what all went went on, and it was really good discussion. So um, let's move on. And uh, the next on the list, I think we're on to Bristol Solar. Oh yeah, here we have. This is my slide. Nice one. Yeah. So um, the Bristol Solar, uh, Bristol Community Solar mm -hmm. Project is really getting close to being really public with what the actual numbers are, you know, what it would cost for panels and that kind of thing. We expect that information to be um, approved by next week by the Department of Financial Regulation. And then people will get to look at, you know, whether they feel like they can afford it and whether how much they would call GMP and find out how much their capacity is and all those kinds of things. So the, um, let's see what, um, yeah, I guess, I guess the main thing is there will be really thorough informational meetings coming up. And the one for Bristol is March 31st. It's a Wednesday, a couple, two weeks away. And so community members uh, can show up and learn more about it. If anyone feels like they definitely want to get involved and learn more, they can go on to the um, Acorn Co-op, see, what is it? AcornEnergyCoop.com and learn more about it and um, put their name, their full name, address, email, phone number in, and Mary will put you on a list. And then you have the option for uh, getting all the information after that, as soon as it's available. Does anyone have any questions about the Community solar right now. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that it is coming quite soon and people will be able to learn more about it soon and, and get involved. This Mo Electric, I believe. Yeah, so the Mo Electric campaign that Steve Wisbaum has really gotten going over the past four years and 
really more so now that he's not a dealer for it, he's really going uh, all out creating an amazing website. And I'll let him talk about it a little bit because um, he'll probably be able to say more accurately what's going on than I will. Thanks. Before I launch into that, and it's just going to be short, um, how, how many of you were at the meeting where I gave a presentation to this group? Was anybody not there? I couldn't see Can so anyway. Um, yeah, I, th I think just Stephen and uh, maybe the rest of us were there. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. So it probably doesn't make sense to, you know, go over the background. So really, is this just an update? Um, so uh, Sally um, took my, um, uh, followed up on that and, and reached out to Martin's hardware. And, uh, and Martin was interested. And in particular, we were thinking about this uh, some of you may have heard of this uh, electric bike lending program. Uh, has anybody heard of that? Local motion? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, for those of you that didn't know, local motion is a, a bike adv ag advocacy organization in, uh, based in Burlington. Um, and they partnered with some organizations, maybe one or two, to um, make electric bikes available by appointment so people could try these. <clears throat> so um, I had, I don't know, uh, I heard about this and I thought, oh, well, we could do this with uh, lawnmowers to give people a chance. So I developed this whole program and strategy and presented it to uh, Martin and Kathleen and they were interested and they approached their insurance company and their insurance company basically basically said, uh, "You're you cannot do this." Um, so, I went back to my original plan, which was to utilize, um, do something I'm calling neighbor to neighbor uh, demo program, which is basically enlisting, creating a, a, a list of people throughout the state who are using electric lawn care products, mowers, string trimmers, that sort of thing, who want to be uh, basically ambassadors um, and answer questions and, and let their neighbors uh, come by or meet at a neutral location or maybe even go to the person's house that wants to see if, how they work. Um, and um, still involving the uh, local vendors, because it's really important to, you know, support these local businesses and, you know, um, and, and get more people involved in this. And it turns out that a lot of these vendors now are starting to sell electric lawn care products, because just that's where the industry is moving. Um, and so uh, when Martin's told me they couldn't do the, the lending program, I asked if, called him back and I sent him a description of this new program. And, and uh, yesterday Martin said, yeah, he'd be interested. And where it fits in, the, what they will do is they will provide, the, the vendor's involvement will be that they will provide a small number of whatever models and brands that they wanna do this with of this equipment to a few local ambassadors who will be able to buy it if they don't already own it or they want to upgrade or expand their their inventory and what they're using um, uh, at a discount and he's not sure what discount he has to look at the margins on these things and in addition to that i thought it would be good to sort of track the effectiveness of this program that the vendor would give these ambassadors discount coupons to the people that participate in this demo program that they can then redeem at the store for a discount in addition to the incentives that all the utilities are now offering. 
So, um, and he said, great. He just needs to work out the details, figure out what the coupon discount, what the discount to the ambassadors. Um, so um, that's in the works. The next step with that would be to um, identify some local people, some people in your local community. And this is where the, the energy committees are really going to come in because they're the they're the, the feet on the ground uh, in the local community. They, they have the established networks. And these ambassadors may, in fact, many of them may be energy committee members, which is fine. Um, but um, so that's happening. Um, we're not ready to, to launch this yet because uh, my son and I are still working on this website. It's getting very close, but we wanna have all these different programs up and running. And so the next program that we're gonna need some help with is we're creating a, so if you go online and look for a battery electric re residential walk behind mowers, you'll see all these products out there, but there's no way to really compare them to each other. It's over, it's, there's so many. And even within a particular company, <laughs> their models, there's a lot. So I had this idea that it would be really helpful um, and, I, and so a lot of this is coming from the fact that I used to sell these things. And, you know, so I, I, kn I know the questions that people, things people want to know, and, and I'm using one myself, and I know a lot of people that have them. And so we're going to create this, a comparison chart by, um, by equipment type, by brand, and by model. And my son is going through right now and getting sort of the the names of these companies and a logo. And then we're gonna put this in a spreadsheet and then we're gonna circulate this and I'm looking for volunteers and no one needs to sign up right now, but um, I'm hoping the different energy committees that we're working with so far, which is your energy committee, Norwich and Stowe and Rochester, um, within that group, we can find some people to, it's gonna take, it's gonna take some hours um, and many hands make light work and um, so and then we'll take and then so people will take the, the spreadsheet and just fill in the specifications um, and it's going to be all uniform like there's just some basic information that I know people um, will want to know when they're getting ready to buy one of these uh, whether it's a residential mower or a string trimmer because there's a big difference in price um, and some other key issues. So I'm gonna need some volunteers for that. And then the other thing we're doing is there's gonna be a, a section on the website called reviews you can use, which will be reviews from real people, <laughs> crowdsourced moderated reviews of as much as many of these products as we can get. And at the beginning, it'll just be a few and then it'll grow. And um, so we'll need people in the local communities who have these mowers and, and and then it will be moderated. So it'll be submitted to the website and we'll uh, actually, and then have maybe have the energy committee in the local community call these people and just make sure they're real people and um, ask if there's any questions, but it's gonna be, the reviews will follow a very specific format. And then lastly, we're gonna be looking for people who just wanna give a testimonial and hopefully provide a picture. And those will be posted on the website, first name, town, hopefully a picture, just, a short statement about you know how much they like using electric uh, lawn care tools. Basically, to really jumpstart this and kick the, my my goal is to essentially make gas powered lawn care equipment obsolete within a very short amount of time, and having Vermont be like really like per capita, just like Vermont, I think at one time was the highest amount of, of photovoltaic generation per capita of any other state in the country. And I would like to do that with lawn care, electric, battery electric lawn care as well. And, and already we've already got every utility in the state. There is no other utility in the entire country that is offering incentives for electric lawn care products, equipment based on greenhouse gas emission reduction. And so we have this to build on and, you know, we can, it can be done and we really can do this. We have an opportunity. Most people keep a mower 
you know, these a lot of these mowers get changed out. If they last 10 years, that's a long time, uh, especially with the ethanol issue. People are having all kinds of problems with carburetors and and um, they're just tired of it. And and now these other these this other equipment really works well. So um, that's all happening. That's fabulous. I have a question that came up in the chat. Can I ask you that question? Yeah. Or Porter, do you want to speak it yourself? Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and say it. Yes, Porter's muted. Yeah, Porter, are you, you're muted if you want to ask it or I'll just read it, either one. I guess I'll just go ahead and read it. Okay. Um, would there be several different ambassadors in Bristol, each with a different model or brand? And how would an how would an ambassador identify what would be the right model or brand for their purposes? Um, I understand the I'll answer the part that I understand the question. So. Yes, my hope was, and this I wrote this, and Sally has a copy of the description of this program. And in it, I addressed the issue of models. Ideally, it'll be, un ultimately it's up to the vendor to um, sell at a discount whatever mowers, brands and models they want. The objective would be to have like, um, so Martin sells, Sally, correct me if I'm wrong. They had a like, like two or three different brands. And then yeah. they had three or four or five different, maybe six different models. Now within that a particular brand, there's not gonna be that much difference. Well, there's a difference in cost and the cost is related to runtime basically and power, um, battery, you know, battery capacity. Uh, maybe some, there might be some differences in the size of the blade motors as well. Um, uh, so yes, the goal would be to have a number of different models. And to answer your other question about how does the ambassador know which model, that's the same question that the consumer is gonna wanna know, right? That's why the product comparison sheet is so important because then people can decide you know, some of it's going to based on be based on a lawn size. Um, uh, that's going to be a big part of it, and but also price. You know, I mean, uh, if the difference in the price really comes down to runtime, but the power is about the same, then you know it might mean that you know you're not getting a, 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 a you know not mowing your entire lawn in one hour, but maybe you don't or you know in one session. Maybe you got to mow for an hour and come back uh, for another hour. But these chargers, uh, these batteries charge up pretty quick. You know, usually like, um, well, I know our steel um, batteries for our, it came with two batteries. Well, we bought two batteries, the steel walk behind mower, that batteries, um, it took, I, we got a fast charger with it. So it was like, it took 20 minutes to recharge this battery. So now you got another half hour, 45 minutes of, of runtime with these mowers. So because of lithium ion battery technology, there's a, there's just a lot of power. So I don't That's know great. If, if there was another question huh. in that or I answered the questions that were asked, but. Well, there is another question that is, has come up uh, and that is, what suggestions or options are there for retiring or re recycling Ooh. the old gas mowers? That's a tough one. Well, you know, it's basically, you know, if it's got metal in it, then the metal can be recycled. And in fact, the other, the only other incentives that are out there for electric or for, yeah, for battery electric mowers that I'm aware of is in California. And there's a few other, I think British Columbia has them too. But in California, it was based on um, smog reduction. And, and they would pay for these commercial mowers, they would pay like half the price of a new mower, but you had to prove, you had to show that the old mower had been destroyed. 
So basically, you know, it's basically we're talking scrap metal, um, which is where, you know, cars go, um, where any uh, metal um, you know, product that contains a significant amount of metal, uh, dishwashers, you know, just appliances, it, uh, you know, there's pretty uh, robust uh, recycling uh, infrastructure set up for metal. Um, so that's where it'll go. Um, yeah, I, I can see that, that that's, you know, that's a good place to go, but also it seems sad to not use something that's still usable, even though I know it creates greenhouse gases, but it's like taking cars off the road and just throwing them away rather than, um, giving them to someone who can't even afford any lawnmower, you know, Yeah. So and, and let them yeah. run it out for its next few years. Let's see. Yeah, that's more, a good point. And I don't know, it seems I, I more agree. resourceful. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and that's a good point to make that I'm not, I personally wouldn't tell someone to get rid of a, of a operating piece of equipment. Um, although that's a choice that someone can choose to make. Um, my focus is on making sure <laughs> that every time someone is getting ready to buy a uh, a string trimmer or any kind of elect uh, 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 um, lawn care equipment, whether it's a walk behind mower or a commercial mower or whatever it is, that because their old one has failed, you know, is is they're retiring it, and this and it happens a lot with a lot of this equipment. It's got a pretty short life expectancy. Um, a lot of this equipment, um, you know, chainsaws are a little different. They last, you know, longer, but a lot of this other stuff is, you know, people are replacing it all the time. So, you know, for me, whenever I see, you know, gas powered mowers being sold and I see someone, I hear someone has just bought a, I've had this happen. A friend of mine just bought a new gas powered push mower. I was like, did you think about electric? And he says, yeah, but you know, I, I just, I don't think they're going to, it would have done the job. And I said, what do you, and this is a friend of mine. I said, I'm just curious what you based that on. He says, well, I don't know. And once I told him about this and shared some information, he said, you know, he's kicking himself now that he didn't, he didn't ask. He didn't know that there was, this technology was out there and it's really viable. So it's mostly, that's the goal of this, this Mo Electric is just to get the word out. Well, and, and help people make these decisions if they're gonna be replacing or buying uh, something anyway, you know, there's yeah. no reason not to go electric at this point. Chris, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I have a, a question, Stephen, about web traffic. Um, because just ha just having an amazing website with incredibly useful information doesn't necessarily mean that that you're going to get people to go to the Absolutely. website. Absolutely. So do you do you have a strategy for that? And and sort of sub question: um, Is there a plan for like in person demonstrations, like like having these at like a farmer's market or where like out where the people are not necessarily on their screens. Such a great, such a great idea. Well, that's, you know, that's what the, the demo that's um, the uh, neighbor to neighbor demos is in person, but you're absolutely right. Um, getting them out where people are. Of course, last summer there weren't people, right? Have, have any of you been to the Warren 4th of July parade? Yeah, I have a okay. few times. It's great. Right. 14,000 people show up to that. Two years in a row, I had my mower there. One year by myself, one year with someone else with a riding mower. I, and then I went to the Montpelier 4th of July parade and I, was, I didn't, hadn't registered, so they didn't let me in. And in a way I was glad because I would have been by myself. And so, you know, the goal of this is to get a lot of people involved and so that it's not just as I, it came to me that I, I'm done being the, being the movement. 
I'm ready to be part of the movement. And for four years, I've been hammering at this and I've, we've made a lot of progress and some of it has nothing to do with me, just the industry is moving this way, but we have an opportunity to really um, make this happen. And it's not gonna be just me, but it's people like Christopher, that, that idea, like getting people to, someone to say, hey, yeah, I'll, let's, let's go to the farmer's market, assuming there is gonna be farmer's markets this summer and just set up with a mower and let people see it. We did that, I've done it a couple of times. There was a, an, an event here in Charlotte um, and um, it, was the town, it was the town party at the beach. And uh, I had my mower and someone had a robotic mower uh, it didn't really get a lot of traffic. I'm shot. And I, I don't think it, you know, people just, they were there to party and drink and, and eat. And they really, it didn't, I had, I think I talked oh. to one or two people, but. So uh, we were going to do a green expo last year, like we did the year before and model some of these things, which we did the year before. Um, so that is going to be a great, possibility once we can all be together again is to is to just have some demo days um and places that might need mowing already like down at the maybe the bristol um down at the bristol rec club or something they let us do a little patch and let people try mowers or something so we can definitely do that so two things um uh, ev electric vehicle events i sh i've been to many of those Again, I was, I was there as a salesperson for one very big expensive mower, the, the mean green mower. You know, it's a $20,000 mower. The, even the residential version of that was 12, 13,000. So it was really a very small targeted market, but I talked to a lot of people who were looking for smaller stuff. And so there's those events. Um, also, I had this idea kind of following up with what you just said, Sally. I had this crazy idea. You may, some of you have may have heard of um, um, mobs. Uh, what are they called? Um, well, there's crop mobs where people go and show up and help a farmer um, uh, harvest. But then there's these mobs that would create, people would get together. Of course, it's all pre-COVID and just get together and like do this sing along in the middle of the town or something. But I was thinking, would it would be kind of cool for a bunch of people to just show up at the town green, of course, have have some uh -huh. um, you know publicity, have someone with it you know that's good with social media, have a bunch of people show up with mowers and just all mow the the town yeah. green with these little mowers, you know, permission or not, <laughs> you know, just do it and and then and then I, I you know, think we I think we do it with permission personally. <laughs> well, if it's the we energy would do committee, it with yeah. permission. Yes, but you know, uh, however it gets done, just to just to yeah. bring people's attention to it. But Christopher, you're absolutely right. This yeah. people aren't going to just go to the website by themselves. Um, but and there's a lot of organizations that the networks that exist already, the Sun Common, the all the you know VNRC, you know, just putting the word out that this this program exists, and here's some opportunities to get involved. Um, and some there's some advocacy work that can uh -huh. that people can do as well. Going to their local school district, um, you know, talking to them yeah. about uh -huh. commercial mowers. So there's a lot that can be done. Yeah, Nathaniel has an idea. I think not so much an idea, Go just a curiosity. Are the vendors like? Is this a thing that the vendors have already set up, or are you actually like piloting it with the vendor too? To where you have to go to the vendor and convince them and and i guess like depending on what the answer is that like this seems like something the vendors should really want to get behind to and like and and be going out and reaching out to all of their retailers and offering one two mowers at wholesale or whatever oh oh you you said vendors you i think you meant manufacturers okay yeah sorry i, I get yeah i guess that's is the manufacturers um making up the difference or is it Martin's that's having to do it? Cause it would seem like the manufacturer should have a desire to do this too, but you probably have thought of that obviously. Okay. So literally <laughs> this whole, this whole program, uh, I just started working on this program in earnest about three weeks ago. Yeah. 
and yeah. it's just basically myself and my son and and I've been bouncing ideas off of Sally and a couple other uh, energy committee people who contacted me on their own. Um, in Rochester and, and uh, Stowe and, and Norwich. But um, so once this is up and running and they see the, the results, my hope is that the manufacturers will want to get on board um, and offer these, you know, these mowers at a discount. But we have to show, you know, it has to, we have to get some traction, right? Because yeah. maybe this is just all crazy ideas and, and it's going to be a complete flop. So um, I, I don't believe that's the case, but um, I think there needs to be a, a track record first. And then, so the fact that, you know, Martin's, it's still going to be good for the vendor because it's going to, you know, they're going to be, a, he only, they only sold a couple of these mowers in the past. I don't know if they carried them two years ago, but they carried them last year. I said, how many mowers do you sell? He said, ah, a couple. So we, we have, we have a, 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 there's a lot of room for, for, for growth. And so if, if, if Martin sees these vendors see results and it brings in traffic and they sell a bunch of mowers, then to give us a discount or give these ambassadors a discount, it's like, it's not costing them anything. It's very, it's very inexpensive advertising. Do the manufacturers sell like more than one? Like if you buy 12, oh. you get them at a, like, is there volume discounts? Like, could you do like a volume challenge? Say, look, we'll do this, but if we sell 12 of them, you got to come in and give Martins an extra 10% off or something, you know? Yeah. You know, um, as with any industry, it's all about volume. And, yeah. and, and uh, so, um, you know, and, and Martin's is, is, is going up against, you know, you can go to Home Depot. Home Depot carries probably, you know, 13, 14 different brands. So, um, you know, so they're up against that. So yeah. that's why he said he had to look at his margins. And, you know, that's just true of, I just heard that, you know, Hendy's uh, John Deere dealer that then became Mountain View because it can, it joined together with a group. And now that's being bought out by, by even much larger company called, you know, United or something. So, you know, there is this, it's all about volume and that's what's killing local small businesses is, you know, and especially now online, you can buy a lot of this stuff online. So, you know, it's, um, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I see Steven is back now and I'm thinking that we should probably move to window dressers pretty soon. Fine. Is there, are there any more things to say around the Mo Electric campaign? Any, any more questions or anything like that? Just, just that I, I never knew how interested I was in electric mowers until I started listening to Stephen. And now, yeah, now totally. so th thank you for that, Stephen. Well, and um, if and you, once you start looking at how much fuel is burned and there's gonna be a Y electric section on the website, which has this, and you can go to my eco equipment supply um, website and look at the Y electric section and it, it is, a commercial mower burns about 600 gallons. These mowers you see, these contractors use or institutions, um, you know, you're looking at about 600 gallons per mower over the, just the growing season. 600 gallons. That's that's um, times 20. Uh, that's 12. That's six uh, six tons of. <laughs> I think it's six tons of of CO2 emissions for one mower. So, and then you multiply all these little mowers, it's, it's pretty, it, this is a, a really big opportunity that's in a little package to make some really significant uh, dent in our fossil fuel use and greenhouse gas emission uh, emissions. So that's why I'm excited about it. And I'm glad Excellent. to hear Christopher, you're excited now too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'm looking forward to helping out with the, uh you know, pulling together the specs for all those models. And finding some ambassadors and some testimonials. Yeah, and... totally. So um, thank you.
And our, another have um, a little bit of information about our window dressers project that we did a couple of years ago. It's about putting in inserts. I'll let Stephen talk about it so that he can uh, share what he's learned and, and a little bit about the project. Okay. Yeah, so I think window dressers is, um, let's see, I don't know how much, let, do, you, do you, let's see, other than Sally, does anybody know what window dressers is? No, okay. Um, so window dressers is a company, a nonprofit company based in Maine that um, provides materials and support to communicate to communities that um, host their own workshops to build uh, double glazed uh, um, interior window inserts. They're very effective, they're very efficient, they're um, reasonably affordable, and um, they are, uh, the, the workshops are, are wonderful community building events. We did one here a couple of years ago, and it was, it was a great success. Great. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously they did not, um, the program has been on hold for a year, obviously. And um, now they are making plans to, to uh, ramp it back up. And um, Vermont has about, I don't know, maybe a dozen towns that are interested, including Bristol, um, towns that have done it before and um, window dressers would like to um, see whether we could get uh, a workshop here in Bristol again uh, sometime this fall. Um, they're looking specifically at sometime in October uh, or November before Thanksgiving. And um, I did reach out to Holly Hall today to Meredith to see about availability. And it does look like with the lead time, we could easily, uh, or at least probably get um, a good block of time, time, probably four days or five days is what we would need to do a full workshop. Um, and we've talked about this before as an energy committee, Sally, I don't know, let's see, it's yeah. just Sally, you and me now from the energy committee here. Right. But we, We've talked about this before and what it takes is a team of um, local people to lead, lead the effort. Um, roughly four key people, a local coordinator who sort of is the key point person for the project with window dressers, um, an outreach coordinator who um, helps to promote the project and get people interested and signed up. Um, someone to uh, organize volunteers and then someone to um, coordinate the measuring of windows when people place their orders. Um, so Sally, yeah. we, we would be, window dressers would be looking to us for some sort of a commitment in the near future, they'd like to um, put us on the calendar essentially. So we would need to pick a date um, once we once we decide that this is what we want to do as a as an energy committee. That sounds good. I like the idea of November because it's you know a little colder. It's <laughs> being, being inside doing a workshop for four days sounds better than being inside during foliage <laughs> in October. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, so I think we could probably look at any any weekend in November, you know, prior to Thanksgiving. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, it was, it was really fun last year. Uh, I mean, two years ago, whenever we did it. Uh, and everyone who got their inserts were so pleased by cozying up their homes. And, uh, and the whole process of doing that work together in teams and everything in Holly Hall was just uh, amazing, an amazing workshop that was going on there with all, all these volunteers creating these things. I'm, I'm I just see a curious, question happening. I'm just curious how it works. So people 
people would measure their windows in their house that they think would work with an insert. They, yeah. they like put that on a list and then the workshop is literally like an assembly where yeah. people yeah. are learning how to do it and they make yeah. them to, to fit their windows. Yes. So the measuring and, would actually be done by some trained measurers. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. That we would, we would um, train people. I did it the first time around myself. I got myself trained and I actually did most of the measuring with some help. Um, and um, very detailed measurements. We use an, a, a digital a, a laser um, oh, wow. uh, tape measure, la laser measure to get it uh, super accurate and you know, measure for square, um, address issues to do with the trim details that may be relevant. And then um, uh, work with the, the homeowner to identify which windows are the priorities, which one, you know, give them a sense of what they're gonna cost and then develop a list, essentially, uh, uh, however many they wanna go for. And um, then we send the measurements to window dressers in Maine and they have a factory, uh, an assembly line essentially that takes, you know, uh, 10 foot long one by two stock, you know, clear pine stock and it feeds it through a machine and it's all it's all cut um, automatically so that they waste almost no wood. And um, they bundle up each packet nice and neat, labeled with the homeowner's name and which window it is in the house. And they ship over um, these bundles of, of uh, parts, essentially, along with the films that are used to create the two glazings the tapes, et cetera. And um, that's where our and local, it, our local uh, um, build workshop comes in. Then we all get together and the homeowners are expected to participate. This helps to keep the price down, the cost of the units down in the neighborhood of, uh, let's just say $35 for an average unit un, unpainted. Yeah. Um, and, and then they have these great jigs. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's it's an amazing them. setup. If you're interested, I can send you more information on, or you can just really go look cool. them up. Windowdressers.org. Yeah. So why interior, not like a storm window? Well, they the, that's really where most of the air leakage is occurring, and where the greatest benefit thermally is had for from a comfort standpoint. Huh. Yeah, so. it makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because if you can, they are actually so tight that you keep uh, moisture from, uh, you know, uh, from uh, going out through the window and then condensing uh, on the on the storm storm window, which is you see a lot of in Vermont homes, the old triple track storms that on a cold night they're completely covered up with frost. When you put these things in on the inside, that goes away. You still see right through. Um, clear as clear as a bell, clear as day. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're good. They're 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 very effective. Uh, relatively simple, um, easy to build, fun, and um, pretty much anybody can participate. So, and it just started with a group of people who started doing it. It really built so fast in Maine because it yeah. was so successful, and it's then it just spilled over into Vermont a couple years ago right i wonder if there's opportunities for like efficiency vermont or some of the utilities through the tier three renewable energy standard to like help to subsidize it well they they uh, efficiency vermont actually did um send um rebates to people per unit yeah right for for cool. these windows yeah, I, I don't know if it was 10 or yeah. 10 or 20 bucks yeah. per unit um that people received. Yeah. So yeah. they're on it. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. They're, they're, which is sort of a testament to their efficacy, really, because I don't think they would be doing it if they didn't believe in it. Yeah. yeah. So we just need to, uh, we would need to assemble a leadership team here locally, Sally. Yeah. Um, c consisting of uh, energy committee or anybody really who is interested in uh, plugging in. I'm thinking that um, participants from two years ago 
would be good candidates to speak with to um, for some of these roles that we would need to fill. You know, it might be helpful to bring on one of the videos uh, that Window Dressers creates and playing it um, on a Bristol Energy Committee meeting so that it's in the recording and then either that or just send it out on front porch form and say, hey, we're doing this again this year. Check out the video. Let us know if you want to be a part of it. Right. No, but I mean, I think we need to probably make that decision sooner than another month from now. Yeah. Okay. That's great. the only trick here. <laughs> I think it'd be All great right. to do that to start enlisting people to sign up and, um, you know, uh, order some inserts. But yeah. I think sooner than that, we need to we need to okay. make a commitment as a as a team. We need yeah. to figure out who the who the team is, um, because yeah. in our first in our first go round a couple of years ago, we were really it was it was an odd situation, and um, we we really didn't have the leadership team worked out the way we, we needed to. <laughs> yeah. it, it all came off just fine in the end, but. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to do it that way again myself, personally. Yeah, we're going to need to expand. Yeah. Um, sounds good. Um, right. I don't know if you want to, um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, how do you want to leave it now? Do you want to, um, we had talked about it yeah. before, remember, a bit, about a year ago, before COVID, we, we had a conversation as a committee and I don't know, two or three other people said, yep, I'll do that job. Yep, I'll do that job. Do you remember that, um, Sally? It was in the... Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember the details, but we could probably look back yeah. somehow and figure yeah. it out. Well, um, we could also, yeah, just, I think we should talk amongst ourselves and... Um, yeah. um, I know Carl really loved doing it and Mike was right. pretty involved and right. Richard was too. So, and then right. if each of us could go I and think, find I think, someone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's check with them um, and just confirm okay. that they want to still do it. And then maybe um, pick a date okay. or a couple of dates and see, um, pass them over to window dressers. That's great. Would yeah. you be into writing that? note to them because you were kind yeah. of the yeah just, sure oh that's great you've got I'll the wording that. for it and even whatever whatever needs to go in there that would be fantastic they they provide a lot of good and we promise <laughs> all right sounds good i didn't mean to talk over you you were going to say something no, no, no. I think we're set. Um, I will, okay, I'll put something, an email together to the rest of the uh, people who participated uh, two years ago and see if we can get some signups for our leadership team. Great. So um, the participants, you meaning those people who even um, bought inserts? Sure. Or just the people who, yeah. I think I would put it out to everybody who participated in the workshop, including energy committee people, but also people who just signed up, great. purchased and helped build their own inserts. Yeah. That's great. So it's about 15, 20 people. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. I'll do it. Okay. It's a great, it's a great project. Cool. Um, I think we're winding down. Does anyone have anything else? they want to speak about at the, this point or say anything? Sounds pretty quiet. All right. Well, this has been another productive meeting. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you all. See you next time. Good night.